guys welcome back to the channel this will be the very last video for this year yeah i mean last, we, one. last one we are going to be reviewing paper number three for edexcel a level maths exam initial feedback that i got from the students was that you like this paper i don't know if that's the case let me know in the comments i did ask a poll and uh, people said that this was great both statistics and mechanics yeah. they did mention that the statistics had one last question which you're going to take a look at yeah the mechanics was very nice it was reminiscent of past papers so take it away give me your thoughts on let's start with statistics first. okay um i just feel like over the years the exams are getting easier and easier mm -hmm. easier in the sense that it's more more accessible obviously there are certain questions in there with a little twist and, and and you know and twist starts off just like the pure pure papers like gcc style mm -hmm. sort of question like probability for example probability two diagram first question you said that about Paper two in pure maps. It was starting off with GCC. Were you saying in, term, in terms of the style of the question? Yes, okay. the first first part. Obviously, the last part is called conditional okay. probability, but it's just you know they give the formula, they give the expression of a mm -hmm. um, conditional probability rather than in a worded way. You have to figure out this conditional. Mm -hmm. It tells you you know in that format. So question two again. This is the summary statistics. They're giving you all, everything you need. You just have to calculate you know the mean assigned deviation. Okay. So you're happy with question one so and two so far? Nice and straightforward. Okay. Uh, question three is hypo you know, binary distribution. They're giving you all the variables. Mm -hmm. They even give you the hypothesis, the, both hypotheses. So you just have to do the, the, perform the test. Okay. Good. Question four is where it gets very worded. Um, mm. But actual maths is actually straight, straightforward. If you want to read it, one and two markers. Yeah. Just one and two it's markers. A, so it's like it's like a question being scaffolded. It's like broken down for you. Yeah. So if you go, you know, if you don't really understand it fully, just read the first part of the question. Make sure you read it slowly, understand it. And then just perform, you know, perform the the maths. Can I ask something? Yeah. If they get parts A, B wrong, or can they continue? Most, of, yeah. I mean, it's, it's some some of these parts are just standalone. Like for example, question uh, for the for the linear regression line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just explain what what, what this represents. Uh, uh, but what, what's the unit of the okay. gradient? What did they say about the last question? Can we jump to that? Yeah, Can I mean, remember when the last video I said it's, series didn't come up, mm -hmm. and it could would come up, you know, on on, on statistics. So okay. you've got a geometric, not sorry, not geometric, arithmetic uh, uh, series here. Uh, it's a probability distribution. It doesn't say it's, it's obviously arithmetic, but you can figure it out because mm -hmm. it's going up in, in plus two. Okay. So, and you know that in probability distribution, everything adds up to one. Mm -hmm. So it forms an arithmetic uh, series. Okay, but was this a hard question? Um, was it challenging? It's challenging in a sense. It's different, uh, but different it's, to what? It's, it's doable. Different um, to what? Like past papers, what kind of questions they have? In terms of, the, like for example, for normal distribution, uh, there's, hard, there's I haven't seen one that has a quadratic link to a, a quadratic equation. Okay. But here it links you to a quadratic and a discriminant. The maths is okay. I mean, it's it's it's, it's just the year one quadratics, but it's just linking it to the probability distribution. Okay. Normally. There, uh, with probability distribution, you're given at the end an inequality, for example, mm -hmm. to solve uh, to find out what outcomes you, you need mm -hmm. uh, or you, you need to or need to work out the probabilities for. Here, are, it links to a quadratic. The solution of the quadratic gives you the outcomes you need, and then you this was out. 11 marks. So, would you see a lot of students losing marks on this question? Yeah, um, it, yes, because if they can't do the first part, mm -hmm. I mean, for, for the for, for the last part, five marker, they can actually they can solve the, the quadratic equation. They can work out the discriminant. Uh -huh. And it says that it has no real solution, so I mean, less than zero. They yeah. could do all that okay. stuff, all that, so and, and get, work get out. Some marks get some marks in that sense. Sure. But obviously, they, they have to link it to the previous part. Gotcha. And if you haven't done the initial part, mm -hmm. you know, they'll lose marks. Awesome. Thank you. Let's move on to the mechanics now. now I heard me mechanics was great. I'm a mechanics teacher. Yeah. I teach the mechanics, and I had a quick look through this paper, and it was nice. Is even the projectile motion. Even, even the projectile was. It, it was nice. It wasn't. It was a, it was it was a nice one in the sense that they given you all the all the variables, so you just have to you know link it together and Excellent. look it out. There was one thing you don't remember you predicted uh, that there was going to be a rough wall. Yeah, and this, <laughs> I just saw it. I just saw it. One mark but for the. It, but but, that but it was it wasn't it wasn't a full thing, but it yeah, was at yeah. least at least if you had done that, that question, it, yeah. yeah, you can you can see how that affects it. So yeah, yeah that's great. Um, now someone mentioned all oh, two pages. This is we've seen this before. We have, may not have seen it in previous years. Yeah. But for I a think question I, to be across yeah, two I think, pages, I think we've I, seen this before where the situation changes. And in yeah, fact, I mean, you've been given the diagram. That's why it's taken two pages. Exactly. Usually, you're given the sentence and you have to recreate that diagram. Yeah. So you got, you're going to have to get used to this. So students watching this who are about to take the A-levels, um, this is something you have to get used to. And the old legacy mechanics does that a lot, doesn't it? 
Yeah, but the legacy one doesn't give you much diagrams. It doesn't give you, no, you have to so make that's, the that's, that's why it's in the stuff watch. Um, yeah, what did you, did you think of page? the question generally? How many marks was that? Ten marks? Um, that last question number I feel, six. It's, I feel like it's, it's broken up into, yeah. into, into, into stages. Like, if you look at it, it tells you to find the reaction first, then find, find the other reaction. So it's, break, it's broken up, you know, no, for the series. It could have easily steps. given you the, the question. You have to figure out. They, yeah, all they, the they could have just said, you know, find. Um, um, I was trying to call that. It's a show question. Both of yeah, show fine, questions. Find, find, I'll find this and then uh, calculate which one's bigger. I guess. Yeah, I think that's not much really. M- it's, 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 it's much there. Yeah, I think it's, it's here. Use the model to find the coefficient of friction or something. They could yeah. have just given you that, which is what you have to do for this second part um, anyway. But overall, was this a good paper? I would say nice. so. It was a nice one. Yeah. yeah. So mechanics was good. Statistics. That little caveat at the end. Yeah. Um, but it's a good paper overall. Now what? What do you feel this would mean for A-level students going off now to their summer break? And, you know, they're going to be asking these questions and we get it all the time. We give the same response about grade boundaries. Yeah. But th- what do you th- feel? Th- the grade boundaries go up or down? That's the thing. These... If, like, every year, I mean... A-level like, does jump, by the way. GCSE yeah. doesn't jump much, like, but A-level most, does jump. The past few, few years, like, but, but as, you know, when we do the reviews, and, and I always say that, oh, this paper was easier than the year before. So I feel like in a grade binding will increase. Last year I said the same thing and it, it, it did increase. It did increase. But not, okay. not, as, not as much as I thought, but it mm-hmm. still did increase. Okay. Um, I just feel like this, is, this, this year's paper was like... Easy. It, well, Easy. More accessible than mm. previous years. So in that sense... I agree with you. I have to agree with you. In that sense, look, we're looking at the whole cohort. In the right. whole... This, is, this, cause this is something that um, I've seen people saying online from comments, student community, that A-level papers were hard, paper one and two, right? Could this be a knock-on effect from the loss of learning to knock-on? Yeah, I was, these are these, I was, these I was, are I was, I was thinking that yeah. too, because this is probably the last... Because like, I'm last a, like, if, if someone from... Take it, go back to one of our students from the past, and if, 2017. If, if, if that's the case, then these students expect that it's this. not going to be like this for the for the years to come. It might. Do you think it would start stepping up again? Half. Because do you feel like the A level didn't take into consideration that there was a loss of learning during lockdown? Students were a little bit behind, yeah. and they came on full hard with these um, new uh, spec papers. They, you know, the questions were hard, and now they've realised. That, you know, they've had to take the low or the grade boundaries really, you know, <laughs> really yeah. pathetically. And they have to now, they started making papers a bit more accessible. Yeah. So over time, is that your prediction? That they, yeah, I feel like the years? graduates will go back up. See, if you go back to the 2019 paper and mm-hmm. compare with this one, mm-hmm. uh, you will see like there's, you know, a much, quite a lot of um, differences okay. in terms of um, level of difficulty. Awesome. Any last words? Because this, by the way, um, I think we should also take this opportunity to say, uh, goodbye to some of these students. They've been following these channels from their GCSE days. I mean, some of them, are, you know, they look forward to your video reviews. In fact, they ask for it. They like, they go to the other video and say, sir, when are you going to do a review and everything? So I just want to say thank you for watching. And it's been, uh, you know, it's been really nice to see you guys growing like this from your GCSE into your A-level. And whatever you're going to do next, whether it's university, apprenticeships or you know going to employment you know i wish you the very best with it and uh, any advice that you'd like to give students maybe who are going to do any mathematical degrees or anything like that yeah well i mean the main thing is what you're probably going to know anyway is is to try to get some work experience within the you know the, the field that you're trying to you know what you're interested in mm-hmm. i spoke to a student to them today um it was the last day they were leave, all leaving uh, he wants to go into accounting and all that, but he's still also thinking of taking a gap year. Mm-hmm. And he was asking me, so you know, I'm like, what should I do? Well, if you decide to take a gap year, make you make use of it. Find you know employment, find a, a work experience. Not just any within. employment though. Try to find link, employment linked link, yeah, to link, link to the course, link to your few future prospects. So Something that you make, can make use put of in your CV. It. Exactly. Mm. Um, so so like not maybe retail or something. Um, you can still do you, you can still do your retail, but obviously it's the hard main, to get obviously the, in the meantime. But while you're Doing the retail job, at least look for you know work experience in in the field that mm-hmm. you want to, in in the future like um, go into. So that's awesome. Okay, I'd like to give one advice actually. Um, look, guys, in this competitive world that we're in, you know how difficult it's not grades and academic achievement alone. Unfortunately, it might get you through the door, but that alone isn't enough. 
You really need to start building on your soft skills. You need to start building on skills that you need in the workplace. And I don't want to turn you into workplace robots because sometimes I look around me and this is what I see. Uh, but, you know, learn skills over the summer right, with your free time. Always be willing to learn. Your education doesn't stop here. You know, if you're going to uni, obviously it doesn't. But if you're going into the world of employment or whatever, education doesn't stop here. There's a lot more to learn. So if you can, go and look up some courses online. There's plenty of free stuff there. Uh, you're going to have to seek for it, though. Um, you know, negotiation skills, uh, being a team player. What makes a good team player? Uh, character building, public speaking, those kind of things. These will build up your own characteristics and your personality, and it will get you, you know, yeah, academically, you might be there, but that will set people apart from others. Uh, if you have these kind of skills. This is something that I always teach my kids, like my own children, mm -hmm. that it's not just academia it's good, alone. good to hear it though. So even, need, even me, it's, more than that. It's, it's not, you know, even yeah. though... I mean, how many might... people do you know that I just, you know, they haven't got nothing outside of whatever they've studied to become. Yeah. That's it, they've got no person. And, and you know, especially when we live, live in a to get, social yeah, media we world, have to everyone can... get out of your comfort That's zone, because if once you get too comfortable, you don't want to... And you do don't want to do anything else. So now you're like, still, still like a, I say you're like a wet sponge. You know, when you're in your youth, you can absorb information easier than when you're an adult. So try to do that as much as you can. That's my advice to you. And don't forget, you know, you, if you want to learn more about this, I will, I'm trying to put together these kind of things, these kind of skills, this kind of mentality and thinking on my second YouTube channel, Life School. So go and check it out. Um, you know, some of you guys have told you about this before, but there'll be more there. And this will be something that will serve you for years to come. So, you know, help me help you, inshallah. So for now, guys, goodbye. Assalamualaikum and all the best with your future. Assalamualaikum.